Google I.O. just finished and a lot of the things that were mentioned today are far beyond cool. Some of these things are coming in July with Jelly Bean and others are coming now if you simply update your application. So I'm Jaime Rivera with PocketNow.com and we're going to go through a simple walkthrough of their update to their Maps application which now allows you to bring these maps offline. Now a lot of the things that were demoed in the video and the keynote happened on a Galaxy Nexus but for the purpose of the video we want to show you that this is available to everyone so we're going to be using an HTC One X for this video. Maps has been Google's baby for the longest time, so it only makes sense that they do something about it. You go into your Play Store to get your update, but you'll notice that the only thing that's changed is the fact that you can now save Maps offline. So, once you go back into your applications tray and launch Maps, you'll notice that the UI hasn't changed one bit. You still get the same buttons at the top at the bottom for local services, navigation, check-in, join latitude, location, history, and you have my places, but what changes here is that your offline maps are here at the right. And the way this works is if we go back to the map, you'll notice that you ha now have an option to make the map available offline. So if I try to tap here, since I already have a map of Houston in my favorites, you'll notice that I already have a bar around it that tells me that the map is already available. If I'm selecting a section that's too large, it'll tell me that it's too large and it'll ask me to zoom in. Once I've zoomed in enough, it tells me what's the estimate file size at the bottom, and I could just say done, but I've already got Houston, so let's look for another map. Let's try New York City, for example. So it's moving to New York City, and all I have to do is move around to the section where I want to save, and I hit Make Available Offline. It tells me that it'll take 34 megabytes, and all I have to do is hit Done. It starts downloading the map at the top, and it takes me back to my previous list. Now, depending on the map and the details are the amount of file size that it'll take up. So, for example, Houston is 74 megabytes, Delaware was 0.6, and San Pedro Sula, where I'm at, is 1.3. The only problem with this service is that sadly, it's not perfect yet. There's still a work in progress. For example, let's try to go into layers and select terrain, for example. If I wanted to save this map in terrain, it won't work. If I tell it that I wanted to make it available offline, it'll take me back to the typical section with roads. Now, another thing that's a work in progress is the fact that if I, let's try to send my phone into airplane mode. You have to bear with me a little. Sadly, HTC devices take a little while to go into airplane mode for some reason. It's going, going, gone. It's finally there. You'll notice that the buttons at the bottom are no longer active. Whenever I'm in airplane mode, the map is available. Let's try to go, for example, to Houston, which is in my places. Offline, let's go to Houston. And there's the bar of everything that I have available offline. I could go into the map, move around. I can do everything within Houston, but then once I'm there, I can't search for anything. I can't navigate anywhere. All the buttons are not working. It'll tell me that it can't complete the action without data connection. It can't take me to places and it can't offer layers. So you're pretty much stuck with just the map that works. You can see everything and yes, you can Hit the button for your location and it'll remember where you are. This is San Pedro Sula and since I have it available offline, that's the reason why it's there. But all I can do is know where I'm at within the map. And obviously if I hit the button at the top for the compass, the compass doesn't seem to be working perfectly right now. Um, let's try to, I don't know. For some reason the compass is not working perfectly right now, but you get the idea that it'll tell you where you are, but that's pretty much the only reason why the map's available. So if you're out and about and you want to use this map for navigation, if you're in a place where you don't have data, sadly, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to work, but again, it's free, so we're not really going to complain about it. That's it for our quick walkthrough of Google's new map service. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching.